You know, John, you don't sue anyone. You keep talking about these lawsuits. You don't actually sue anyone. So no one believes you. So now he has to list off what he's up to. Uh, North Cleef, all your threats and not one lawsuit, really? I sued Sharon Stone. I sued Sirius XM. I'll just point he out again. threatened 60 lawsuits Sharon Stone and did none. Settled out of court. In six years. So while you may have sued her, it was a settled out of court scenario where they actually did physical harm the to you. So it's kind of a no brainer, work. and they just gave you thirty thousand dollars to go and You would have gotten a lot more hell. Sirius XM stupid. was frivolous. It was so stupid. Yeah. You had no chance. You got thrown out with prejudice. You had no chance at winning that case. It was so stupid. And the appeal was laughed out. I was court. about to sue Tuki. If he keeps it up, I will. I was about to sue Tuki. Lie. He said he was going to file the paperwork Thursday morning. You can't sue Tukey over a video you don't own that you claim to own the copyright for, which you do not. We all know you don't. You can keep saying you do, but you're a liar, and you've been, you're a proven liar, so that's stupid. Last I heard, he put a certain thing behind his Patreon. Well, Patreon has... A certain ding, ding, D-I-N-G. St uh, more stringent rules than even YouTube. So if that be true, Rocco, then we got problems. And I will file a lawsuit. You can call it fair you use. Didn't do that you either. <laughs> uh -uh. All right, this is my favorite. <laughs> this is John not understanding how the law works in any single way. What Tukey and Rocco, what they say is, even if John owned the copyright for this video, which he does not, he gave a copyright strike to I YouTube. Think it was he had to release the strike because they disputed it. And if you continue that down that route, then John, as the copyright holder, would have to sue him within 10 days, business days. Mm -hmm. So he decided to release the strike because he's got nothing. But he's acting like he did this out of the kindness of his heart. But watch out, because I will sue. So Tukey's like, well, no, it's, it's fair use either way. Listen to what John says here. You can call it fair use all you want. Nuh-uh. Wait till they hear you bash trans and bash black people. You're a racist, too. We all know that. We've Even on this show, you said That's a bunch of racist shit works, that I had to kick you out of here. We'll see who the judge is going to side with. Judges don't Over side. A copyright dispute? <laughs> yeah. Don't forget, Rocco. You might know where I live. Whoa, that's a weird veiled threat at the end there. He's like, I know where you live. I know where you live, too, Rocco, just so you know. So, in John's crazy, warped, retarded mind, Demented. he thinks that a judge is going to say, well, do you own the copyright this video? No, I do not. Well, isn't it fair use? Well, no. In the fair use clause, if someone bashes trans people or is racist with their jokes, then you side with me. The judge goes, I don't remember that part. Let me... Uh, but you're making some sense. Oh, there it is right there. You're right, John Melendez. We side with you. He really thinks that he's going to win in the court of public opinion. It's not right. the same as court. The Melendez Dummy. clause. <laughs> yeah. A judge, look at these tweets. <laughs> it's so stupid. So this is one of my favorite things to have happened on any of his shows that ever. He's trying to explain how he loves everyone because Casey Armstrong and a lot of people are asking John, why do you keep calling Carl Lady K and Carla he calls Casey? I love all people. He's going to prove it. I am not anti-anybody. I don't care race, religion, color, ethnicity. I don't care. I treat everyone equally. Heck. <laughs> I think the blacks should have sex with the whites. He thinks the blacks should have sex with the whites. Wow. <laughs> I mean, That's equality. this is a... A modern figure. This is a progressive person right here. It's blowing my the, mind, John. The black should have sex with the whites. <laughs> and then, not two minutes later, check this out. This is insane. At New York Presbyterian, we built up our... <laughs> and then, not two minutes later, check this out. This is insane. Penis wrinkle. You shouldn't call them... Well, no, you never use the term... You never use the term the blacks, ever. That is derogatory. You, ever. You just said it! You just said <laughs> the blacks! So Peter goes, you shouldn't call them the blacks. They are brown, which is, by the way, a callback to John not understanding why black people are called black people and white people are called white people. We're beige. 
<laughs> that brown. I told Robin Quimmis this. He's so stupid. I'm kind of told. I actually have that clip in a second. But John didn't even realize that he just said that. He was the one who said the blast. He's just like, oh, no, no, you never do that. That's actually very bad. Yeah. Never no. do that. They are brown. Yes. And we're beige. We are not white. I said that. I said it to Robin Quimmis. I go, I, you know, this whole, I isn't saying black. Isn't that racist? Because, you know, the brown. Would you call this wallet black? Yeah. yeah no. Actually, I would. I would, would you call this white? No. That's no. Puerto Rican. It's gray, it's like yellow. Beige, pink. <laughs> it's it doesn't make any sense to me. Do you have no understanding of history, John? You really don't know why they're called black people and white people? Is he that stupid? Again, I, I pose the question. Brandon, you're new here. Is he that stupid? <laughs> I think he is. I think that you try to, uh, you give him too much credit for being this dumb. Uh, you said it before. If he could pull it off, it's the world's greatest acting performance. Right. But no, he's just dull. I don't know why they call him blacks. What I even asked Robin Quivers that. <laughs> he's such an idiot. All right, so now John's going to start threatening Casey Armstrong. So Casey used to be involved in this business and. The business partner, Casey claims it's just a sales guy for this company or something, but that guy reached out to John to give John this information on Casey. And so John, whenever John gets information about someone, he's going to weaponize it. Casey was and a he producer cannot wait to weaponize Stern this info he has. For years. Casey, Brian Leader has DM'd me about your nefarious business antics and about how you stole the idea of WMAP. And how you do, and how you never wrote those books. So if you're gonna fucking push me, I will read them on tomorrow's show. The ball's in your court. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chugging his Gatorade Zero. Later, that same threat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> refreshing. I had to leave all that in. Thank you. So. <laughs> I don't hear anyone else. There's a lot of podcasts in this stupid little dabbleverse, hackverse world, and people go after different people from time to time. I don't hear anyone else with threats of, if you do this, then I'm going to leak this information. That's almost like extortion or blackmail. Yeah. It's definitely not something that's legal to do, to <laughs> say that I have this information and I will ruin your life if you do this thing that I don't want you to do. But he always has to have like uh, ammunition in the chamber ready to go. It's, right. He's got to have something on the ready. Yes. So John and his dumb mind is thinking, because he even said he knew that Casey was coming on point, devil point yesterday. If I hear one lie, I will release. He already said what he was going to say in the case he didn't write the books that he claimed to have written and nefarious business. Deals. He's like, I will read the DMs. Thankfully, Vince the lawyer comes on later on in this episode and goes, John, that is nothing. What you have there, he goes, I've looked into this. Casey did nothing wrong. You have no evidence. Just because you got DMs from somebody doesn't mean anything. So you, you think you have all this stuff. You don't. You have nothing. There's nothing to go with here. You could have This guy could have no idea who Casey Armstrong is. He could have actually worked with Casey and just not liked Casey and just wants to fuck with them. But John, in John's mind, if he reads something on Reddit or if someone messages him something, or if they super chat him something, and it must be true. It 100% right. has to be true. Let's not forget that John's a class act. And he used to date this girl, Karen. But not just Karen. Karen has a last name, too. And he's put that out there. And people like to ask him questions about what him and Karen would do in the bed, as, as you might uh, say. If you were born before 1971, you must see this. The digital dollar is... In Harris's face, I think maybe once. I mean, definitely on her stomach. What a class act. Oh, come on, man. Is, is Karen Harris a public figure? Are you allowed to talk about someone like that on your show? Oh, man, that's just classless. It's that classless. sucks. But, Brandon, you come from radio. You must know mm -hmm. the rules around this kind of thing. I don't know if there's FCC rules, but you guys never use people's last names if they're not, they don't have their own show or they're not a public figure. If they're a politician, yeah, have at it. 
if, they, if they're your competition. But yeah, like, what are you we doing? We try not to unless that person puts themselves out there. If that person is out there gallivanting something or, tra- or saying, look at me, as far as I know, I've never heard of this person. I've, I've, I've never seen this person publicized anywhere. So to me, right. this is just, hey, by the way, let me just tell you a quick little fact about what me and Karen did. I, yeah, definitely on a stomach. And this is a girlfriend since before he was married. So we're going back. 20 30 years and he's still bragging about having sex with a girl it's embarrassing yeah. all of this is very embarrassing it it almost Cringy. is like a guy who doesn't have sex with girls <laughs> right that's the kind of person who brags about finishing on someone's face or in their mouth like what he said a few yeah. weeks ago i got so much tail in 86 <laughs> all right <laughs> oh my god this whole episode started off bragging about this battle of the bands when he was in high school oh. <laughs> it's so stupid <laughs> he had every single detail it went on oh. for like 12 minutes explaining how amazing his band was and everything that happened we were All the right. best so let's talk about misgendering me i'm bored of this subject i don't care john can call me lady k martin carla and anything else i don't give a fuck the reason why i'm pulling this clip is because john's so bad at defending himself over it he doesn't understand how to defend himself and I love when he gets his mother involved. She's sitting right next to him. Uh, <laughs> Base pill. Thanks five bucks. Every time you extend the call, you break your own regarded lib for rules. How can you be trans lyle if you make being trans? How is it derogatory? If he wants to be a lady, then if he wants to be known as Carla, what do you want me to do? Not call him Carla? Do I want to be known as Carla, producer Chris? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I've never said that. I shouldn't call him. Lady K, if he wants to dress up as a cowgirl? Is he gaslighting me? I, I want to dress up as a cowgirl. It was a, it was a consequence of wearing a cow bikini. Not a cowgirl. A cow bikini is a consequence on the creep pop. So this is back to the performative version yes, of John. I know, it's annoying. The, uh, uh, I don't know what to call this one. He... He uh, he's like, oh, I'm just trying to do the right thing. Right, it's it's confused. It's gaslighting. Confusion. Yes, yeah. and I'm not a fan of that term. But this is exactly what this says. He's just like, Carl's the one who calls himself Carla. Yeah. No, never once, never a single fucking time. No. And and no, I've never heard you call yourself Lady K either. And if he wants no. to base this whole thing off of the cow bikini picture, he was in drag all the time for the Tonight Show. There's pictures of him dressed up like Wendy. Does he? I'm not stuttering. Uh, you know, you gotta. It, it works for you too, asshole. Yeah, for uh, Miss America, the uh, sure. Howard Stern book. He famously has a photo in there dressed in drag, dressed up like a woman. But I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> Juanita. And come in my chat is Carla. I'm not supposed to call him that. I never did that. What do you? If I call him Carl, then I'm misgendering him. Okay. Right? No. <laughs> you know. Ma, if somebody comes in my chat and keeps calling himself <laughs> Carla, then I'm not gonna call that person Carla. What's a chat? Yeah, then I'm gonna call him Carla. <laughs> I, I, leading the witness, yeah. no objection, Your Honor. Ma, Ma, if someone comes into my chat and says I'm better than them, I'm better than them, right? She'll be representing him in the next suit. <laughs> yes. And then he poses in a cowgirl outfit. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. He's so stupid. Yeah. Cause that's what you wear every day. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the mom's enjoying this. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. I love so. how he does his show in front of the fine china, by the way. Now, I don't have a fantastic background myself, but when you're putting, when you're the star of the show, find something better than the fine china. Yeah, he should be in a room somewhere. He's always out in the living room bothering everyone. And I didn't <laughs> pull this clip. It was a couple days ago, but his mom is milling about in front of him while he's doing a show. He's like, Ma, Ma, you're distracting me. Can you just go in the other room? Can you just get up and go in the other? It's like, you're in her fucking house, John. What are you doing? You're bossing her around. She's not so asking you to podcast mom. every day from her living room. All right, so because John likes to call people gay and misgender them, people keep calling him out for that. Again, I don't care. John can call me gay till he's blue in the face. and He probably will. Probably will at some <laughs> point, yes. But this is John's uh, defense for that. This is a very good product. Don't miss out on it. Don't wait until the day you need it. Use it now or never. I have two gay kids. You think I'm anti-gay? Are you out of your mind? Now, this is what I want to analyze. We talked about this on Point Table Point. Actually, I'm going to bring in my buddy Cardiff. He might have uh, some info on this, too. What's, what's happening, Cardiff? Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hope you're in a better mood now than you were this morning. 
I'm always in a good mood on this show, Carl. All right, good. Hey, I'm hey, glad hey. to hear that. We treat you the right way over here. And I do want to go back to the Battle of the Band stuff if you have a second. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that yeah. in a second. John just said he has two gay kids. So mm -hmm. we know that the middle daughter is gay. She explained that in that article that we read that was posted. Yes. And then his firstborn was gay in high school. In fact, famously was a uh, prom queen and queen. The first time ever a gay couple was voted the prom queen and queen at that high school. The Calabasas her, High School. Yes, her and her girlfriend yeah. were very popular. And we only but know then, that because he tweeted it out constantly. Correct. I know yes. uh, all this information I know because John's told me this. <laughs> yes. And everyone else, all right? This is not, I'm not fishing for this information. <laughs> so, but then the gay daughter became a man Mm -hmm. who I assume still likes women. Wouldn't that make him a straight man? Wouldn't he have one gay daughter and one trans son, not two gay kids? I think instead of saying gay kids, he, he should have used the alphabet, yes. the, uh, the LGBTQ. Then, yes, then you get away with it very easy. You don't have to explain I'm, yourself. I'm looking for the, I keep trying to think, but nothing happens, drawn. Right? <laughs> yes, I know. It's, it's, it's a real head scratcher, isn't it? You're like, all right, I know John's a victim, but he's, is he describing his victimhood correctly? I can't tell. He doesn't know. <laughs> Cardiff, talk to me about this Battle of the Bad story that he started off his show with. He, well, he he went on for about ten minutes describing the sets they built. Yep, they had guillotines and trap mm -hmm. doors and all this costumes, of costumes, masks. They had this whole elaborate thing where pallbearers came out and carried a casket up to the stage. He didn't put this much in the opening for Ozzy, <laughs> but at Plain Ridge High School, Plain Edge High School. My alma mater. Uh, yep. <laughs> he put all this effort into doing this, and it was a sold-out show. Remember, it was a sold-out show for the Battle of the Bands. Like, he was talking about this. There's no way he built... There's no fucking way Stutter John built a trap door. John, show us something from this Battle of the Bands that proves any of this actually happened. Like, he's describing Alice Cooper in eight, 1986. That's right. what he's describing. It's not the... the what were the still ministers or... Stiff ministers. Stiff, stiff ministers. stiff ministers, yeah. The stiff ministers. And then uh, George Collin gave me a time machine, and we got Eddie Van Halen <laughs> and Alice. Mozart, and we started was, rocking out. Bucket was, was there. Out. I thought I saw <laughs> Bill and Ted. Do you, know what, do you know what kind of engineering is required to build a trap door <laughs> that somebody's not going to die from? Yeah, it's not, I'm not buying it. Oh, you keep flicking out and off over there. I don't know what. Chris? All right, we have to do too handsome. That. <laughs> That's never the problem with uh, producer Chris Cardiff. Speaking of handsome, there's a guy who uses the old Cleveland Indians logo as his avatar, and John is not happy about that. This guy is using cheap Wahoo. <laughs> that is racist. Okay. Didn't and notice he's the insulting name. My daughter. <laughs> oh, okay. I was gonna say that's not why he's using it. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's go back to what that was. It is uh, Lily Delabate, and of course uh, that would imply <laughs> that John's daughter's father is actually Gary Delabate, Baba Booey, and it does say, uh, "Is Baba Booey my real dad? I hope he is. He's rich." And so, whenever John sees something like this, that he doesn't want to address. He either talks about a spelling error or a typo or racism. This is a logo that was on a stadium three years ago. Right. It was on everyone's shirt in that stadium three years ago, and now it's the craziest thing anyone's ever seen. I three years ago, this ended. Guy is using cheap Wahoo. That is racist. Okay? And he's insulting my daughter. <laughs> what? Actually, insulting Baba Booey. <laughs> yes, because that's what Carl was trying to compare Lily to Gary because of her teeth. Yeah, yeah, they beat on my kids, Mom. <laughs> she, she goes, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. She's like, it does make sense, though. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, because of her fucking teeth. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, Susanna, Susanna and Gary were very good friends, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, right, it's all coming together for her. I was like... No. But I can't call him Carla. But he can goof on Lily. 
But I can't call him Carla. Uh, I know it is. I'm glad you're watching, Bum. Because you see the hypocrisy in all these people. It's not hypocrisy. I don't care if you call me Carla. It's fine. We don't care. Can you imagine a grandmother having to deal with this? No. I'm I'm glad you're here to hear my side of the story so that you can back me up on all of this. Yeah. Yeah, must be nice. Yeah, Yeah, John. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So now this is... This is hilarious because um, Vince, the lawyer, has been sending food to John's house, regardless of where he is, California, Florida, New York. It's constantly food getting sent to his house. And on Christmas Day, he sent Domino's, and John was not having that. Oh, we don't need that shit. Get that shit out of here. But they kept sending food, so eventually John decided to make signs and put them outside. He's got all these signs outside. (laughs) fucking amazing. Tell people, yeah, I have an example of one that (laughs) Shuli sent me. We showed on Point Devil Point last night. I'll show you. So John decided to put these signs out. Well, unfortunately, Vince decided to order pizza from the place they actually like the pizza from. So now, what the fuck are we going to do? How do we navigate this? Because we actually want that pizza, but we already put up the signs. And how are we going to pull this off? Don't. Vince. Thanks for talking. The guy who lives off 7-Eleven wings. They're not going to come up here. Won't eat the you know, I got signs all over the place, Ben. He's trying to send us a free pizza from Papalotto's. Oh. So if you want him, you got to go out front. <laughs> yeah, not, he's a friend. Oh, okay. That's Vince. Yeah, that's Vince. So, he, so if you want it. He's a friend. He's trying to solve this problem right now. He's like, okay, there's food being sent here. We want that food. John, there are signs outside that say, don't ring the doorbell. You get up and answer the door, door when it rings. <sighs> Uh, Mom will sit on the rain. Yeah, that was a solution. Ma, you go wait. You wait for it. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, the leading the witness. So if you want it, yeah, if, yeah, I right. want it. But I'm not saying that <laughs> That's part. That's a good point. Yes. Outside now? Well, they'll probably come and see the signs and not come in. But if you don't want to get up, don't worry about it. Uh, oh, put it on her. You know, they'll keep it for you probably. Yeah, yeah don't worry. Yeah, you can go down there yeah, and pick it up. Yeah, sorry, man. I, the, 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 you know, we got it all... All barricaded here. Yeah, barricaded. <laughs> yeah, so this is an example of this sign I have it up on the screen right now. Do not knock, no, 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 no. Danish thing. <laughs> yeah. Do not knock or ring the doorbell. Three exclamation points. And for some reason, instead of a K, they put an N, and then they tried to fix it by coloring it in, but I don't think it yeah, worked. Oh, wait, that draws attention to it. <laughs> yeah, that looks even stupid. My five-year-old <laughs> daughter can make a better sign than that. Yes. That is such a terrible sign. <laughs> There's no no thought about centering or they how much room they're going to have. Tell me this, I'm like, oh, shit, how do I fit doorbell on here? What was I going to say? You know, <laughs> the word do is the biggest word on here. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly lost real estate. Three months later, figured out there the enemy. <laughs> So and now this think- is the same pizza guy who's John got his son into NYU. That's right. I forgot about that. There's so much has happened this week. It's so insane. So uh, do you want to tell that story real quick? John what? had to call the dean yeah, and, and so, vouch so, for this guy. He doesn't so, even so this guy asked for a letter as John is such a esteemed NYU attendee. That's all I'll say is he Not attended right. NYU. Mm-hmm. We have no evidence of graduation. Correct. Uh, but this pizza guy asked John to write a letter to help his son get into NYU. And John, going above and beyond, got the dean on the phone, said, hey, this is this kid. He's going to do good. <laughs> it's a good kid. It's a good kid. I, I, I don't know. I'm looking at the grades. I'm looking at what he did as far as extracurriculars. I just, I'm not seeing it. But if... John Melendez is telling me this is a good kid. All right. I'll do this for you, buddy. It's unbelievable. He's really stupid. He thinks that we're all stupid, too, which is the fun part about this. And 10 short years later, his son gave my son skateboards. So quid right. pro quo. More of his delusional so, fantasies. Yeah, I forgot about that part. He of saved it. three so, people drowning. Uh, now Same we're going to see John watching Casey Armstrong. And I just want us to sit pow to review another show how to analyze it what he does because he's a moron he yells at casey armstrong as if casey is watching him back he literally has conversations with people who aren't there 
and you aren't watching the show. I know Casey wasn't watching the show because I talked to him right after this happened, and he's like, oh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't watching that. So he's not watching this. He doesn't. He's not paying attention, but John wouldn't know that. I got to reply to it because uh, my, fr- my friend uh, Tubby, he sends me a bunch of clips of John talking about me, and every fucking clip is a lie. Really? Like what, Case? Like what? What's the lie? I'd like to hear it. Dumb nuts. Well, maybe unpause it then. He pauses and starts yelling at him. This is not <laughs> happening in real time, Jeff. This already is. This is pre-recorded. You're watching a rerun. <laughs> Yell louder. A, a live play with John. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me the lie. It's completely untrue. And I, I don't know. How does he get away with doing that? Look, I'm not going to sue the guy. Everyone knows that. I happen to be a, a man. Maybe I should I should knock out that shit. But while he's going to bash me for being anti-gay, he just uses as if men, only women sue. Is that what you're trying to say, Kate? No, he's saying it's you are like so you, who everybody. bad at this. It is so easy to take you down. All right, John, I'll translate it since you're a moron. What he's saying is that man up. Be a man about it. Settle these things outside of court and the law. Let's not get courts involved and attorneys and attorney fees and judges. He doesn't man have any the fuck it. up. That is misogynist. Talk to someone directly <laughs> is what Casey is saying. And watch John. He's so proud of himself. He thinks he's got a gotcha right here. As if men... Only women, Sue? Is that what you're trying to say, Kate? No, that's not what he's trying to say at all. That's stupid. And this, No, that's John deliberately not getting the point. Is he deliberately not getting the point? Okay, yeah, because watch him victory laugh about this. You are so bad at this. It is so easy to take you down. Because I'm a man. What does that mean, Case? You're not going to sue because you're a man. So only men don't sue. Is that what you're saying, Case? You just screwed up your whole argument in your first 10 seconds. Hey, John, when you end up in a hospital with a heart Vince, attack... you must be impressed. Oh, another stroke. Nobody's going to come see you. Lamas. Nobody, not even your and mother. Fucking... Oh, yeah. See how he's not oh. talking back to me? <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> I shut him up. Yeah, he's not saying nothing. She makes it's fucking Lady K seem like Einstein. Sick burn. So based on this criteria, can John's oldest son... What does Albert Brooks suit? got to do with it? <laughs> well... See, again, you go back to are there two gay children or just one? I don't know. I don't know. So confusing. See, I know what you're saying. Deliberately not miss, deliberately missing the point. But then the way that he says, I just fucking crushed this guy. Obviously, he has no argument against me because I beat him. And this goes on because it is. And then props to VTL, something I don't say very often. He brings up Tahiti Village. He goes, Jen. What about if someone brought up about, you know, how you used to promote Tahiti Village and that was kind of a shady thing that they were doing, the timeshare? Because remember, we played it recently when John was on the Adam Carolla show in 2008 and he's promoting Tahiti Village. He didn't say it was a timeshare. He didn't say there was a timeshare pitch. He didn't say anything like that. He just said, three days, two nights, beautiful resort, and it's totally free. you got to trust me on this one. Just tell him John Melinda sent you. And it's a free vacation. It's, it's beautiful. Never, and you're going to be forced to be in meetings, and there's a hard sales pitch, and you got to go through this and this and this. None of that information was put out there. So Vince brings this up to him, and all of a sudden, John's memory gets foggy. It's weird, because John remembers everything. It's a steel trap. He can't get past this. As soon as Tahiti Village gets brought up, John can't remember, and he starts to stutter again, huh. which is weird. I haven't seen John stutter in months. But then all of a sudden, when he's lying... <laughs> Remember you pitched Tahiti Village? Should we hold you liable for that if there was anything wrong with it? I don't know if there was, but... Tahiti Village. Tahiti Village. Yeah, you used to pitch Tahiti Village. Remember you were fighting with Howard, and you weren't necessarily on Howard's show, but you were pitching it to um, one of the other podcasters, and that's where you and Howard started to get into an argument about like 10 years ago. Tahiti? You yeah. don't remember being a pitch man for Tahiti Village? Oh, oh wow. no, but was that... The, was it, I, I thought it was just timeshares. The only thing John has ever admitted to has been being a bad actor when he has 
yes. spoken of his own movie. Right. So he should not try this tactic. No, I know. It doesn't work at all. We're not buying it's it for a second. Terrible. Looking off in the distance. Oh, Tahiti Village. Yeah. Gosh, that sounds familiar for some reason. Why? I could go for a Tahitian treat right now. Well, <laughs> I have one more clip on here. And this is my favorite one because <laughs> as they're talking about all the transphobia and all these terrible things and, and John's children, Vince asked the question that we all want to know the answer to, only because John will not answer it. <laughs> would you have sex with a trans woman? I don't care if it's pre or post, whatever. Would you have sex with a trans woman? So Vince asks this, this question, and John, the deflections here are amazing. <laughs> There's two in a row, actually. <laughs> Tell you. Workout video. Would no. you ever hook up with a post-op transsexual? I have never thought about those things. Well, think about it now. If, if presented with I that, know Jim Norton is with a... Um, no, nope. you know, uh, neither here nor there. Uh, a transgender person now, and I don't. Yep. It doesn't. Pre or post op? I it, I don't. Well, does pre. does the person have a penis or not? Jim Norton's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does he know that for a fact? I don't know. I think he just we, wants out of this interview. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. We can only assume. We can only assume. Yeah. Yeah. So if someone had a penis, would you hook up with them if they were trans? Yeah. Good question. What are these people trying to come into my oh, room? And why did you give sudden, my fucking link out? All of a sudden, there's people trying to get into his chat. Oh my god! What, or I mean, into the the show. They're in the green room back there. Oh, he can see the green room. He just yeah, he just noticed it now. Even though they've been there for 15 minutes, because I know it was going on behind the scenes. He had Mike Morrison there and producer Joe both trying to get on the show. Both got blocked. They both shown evidence of that. They've they uh, filmed it. Them getting blocked by John. And now all of a sudden it's just like, all right, enough about Jim Norton. What would you do? And he's like, wait a second. What is this back here? Me? And, I didn't give shit up. Yeah, it looks like it's like weird. <laughs> Vince what? is also a bad liar. <laughs> uh, who, me? <laughs> yeah, watch. <laughs> I didn't give shit up. Yeah, it looks like it's like weird. What? I didn't give shit up. Don't let him in. No, I'm not. But you definitely gave it out because I only sent you the link. <laughs> okay. So... That's that's our buddy, uh, stuttering John. Hey, is this a big we gotta keep asking that question. I don't think anyone should give John money, but if you do, ask him if he would have sex with a trans woman.